Okay, so step sequencer in the new Logic 10.5. Um, I've tried doing this in one video and it's impossible. There's just so much to it. So I'll break it down into bits. Um, this is just the basics, okay? Here's step sequencer. We'll look at it in a sec, the basic stuff. But I want to start by showing you a party piece step sequencer can do. Um, over here, I've got a drum pattern, right? And it's, um, it's a simple one bar drum pattern triggering an acoustic kit just one bar long right just one bar long let's just close this later just one bar long and by using the skip feature the kick drum pattern is going to constantly vary across all 16 bars as the pattern cycles round and round over 16 bars which is like the drummer sort of holding down the rhythm with the hats and the snare but constantly varying the kick pattern to create variety across all 16 bars as it plays and it sounds like this. Yeah, that's fantastic because you've got the drummer now constantly varying the kick drum pattern as each each bar cycles around, and it's it's just done with one click, just one click. Make a basic pattern and just do one click. That's just one of the many things you can do with step sequencer. And I mean, you can't do this with the drummer patterns, and you could do it with MIDI notes in a traditional MIDI region, but I mean, it would take you forever. Okay, so step sequencer. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is the selected track, the playhead's over here, but that doesn't matter because Step Sequencer plays independently of the logic arrangement. Here's a Step Sequencer pattern on a different track, nowhere near the playhead. Hit, and I open it, All right. and you can play the pattern independently inside Step Sequencer. Let's just slow the tempo down a smidge to suit that pattern. Yeah? So you can work on your patterns, focus on them, independently of the arrangement and then when you're ready you can just hit play and the pattern will play from the container region block in context with any other music at that part of the song all right okay now um to create a new pattern from scratch you can let's say a pitched instrument select the track click on the background to make sure no other pattern is selected because if it is it will appear in the pattern editor it, it doesn't matter where the player is and which track is selected right so click on the background to make sure there's no other pattern selected put the player to a position and if you then open the editor and if you know if it's on piano roll go to step sequencer and for a pitched instrument you're presented with this one octave c2 to c3 map and as soon as you put in a note a step a four bar region block is created at the playhead with that note that step in it in a one bar default pattern repeated around four times now same with drums but go to a drum track again click on the background to make sure no patterns selected and with drums you get this sort of weird drum map um, put a step in and the same thing you get the default one bar pattern and the region block that's created is four bars repeating what you've put into this one bar pattern three times to make four bars in total the other way to do it is you just select the track and go to the put the player where you want and bring up the shortcut menu and create a pattern region you've got an empty block there ready to start sequencing and that's the same for a, a pitched instrument play it where you want bring up the shortcut menu and create a pattern empty region block at the playhead and you're ready to start sequencing Okay. Now let's just go back to drums here. Um, let me put in a new block there. Okay. Now let me just before I start, I'm going to put a different template on it. We'll come to templates further on. I'll put the drum template on it. That just gives me a better starting general MIDI set of drums, right? Now here's the thing. By default, the step sequence of pattern is 16 steps long. 
and the value of each step is a sixteenth. This is the step value for the whole pattern. So 16 steps, each step with a value of a sixteenth is 16 sixteenths, which makes one bar. Beat one, beat two, beat three and beat four, each beat having four sixteenths. So if the default pattern is one bar long, why? Whenever you create a pattern, no matter how you begin it, you always get a four bar long pattern region block. Why is it always four bars long and not one bar, the same as the default pattern? Well, look, I mean, if I go with these drums and I put in a simple beat, like that, just kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, there's my one bar pattern. And here's the region block. There's that one bar pattern, but the region container block is, is four bars long. So that one bar pattern I've put in a basic kick snare is repeated over the next three copies. It's that one bar pattern cycling around a total of four times. Right? If I were to add an extra note into this one bar pattern, it gets added to each of the other three bars because what I do here gets copied to bar two and three and four. Okay, but the reason the region block is four bars long is because at the default step value of sixteenths. We can make our pan 64 steps long, four bars. So I'll start with this one bar basic kick snare, which is looped around, so to speak, here three extra times to make four repeats. Make the pattern 64 steps long, and now my pattern is four bars long, filling the entire container block. And that original one bar kick, snare, kick, kick, snare is now hard baked into the next three bars across my now new four bar long pattern at 64 steps. So that allows us to, you know, straight away do some really time saving stuff. We want to make a, a four bar pattern of the basic pattern that goes around over four bars, but has some variations across the four bars. Well, we start by making the simple pattern. At one bar in length that gets copied to bar two three and four then we hard bake those in by making the pattern four bars long now that simple kick snare pattern is is now hard baked into the other three bars now i can add in my variations like there there and there just add some variation kicks across my four bars but the initial pattern you just put it in one bar and then make the bar make the pattern four bars long and it gets hard baked into the other three bars Yeah, easy peasy, right? Um, now, there is no um, horizontal zoom with the pattern editor. The pattern always fills the width of the editor. So with a 16 bar pattern, a 16 step pattern, one bar, and by the way, as soon as I knock that from four bars back to one bar, all those extras, those little extra kicks I put in in bar three and four, they get removed because now we're back to one bar being repeated four times. Um, so the pattern always fills the width of the editor. If I make my pattern four bars long now, 64 steps, remember at the default step value that is, right? I see all 64 steps, but I can use this icon and click it once to zoom in once. And now I see the pattern divided in half. The first 32 steps, bar one and two, and the second 32 steps, bar three and four. Click this again and it splits into four because we zoomed in even further. The first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar, each 16 steps of my entire four bar pattern. Then click the smaller icon, you zoom out once to see the pattern split in half, four bar pattern split in half. The first two bars, the first 32 steps, the second two bars, 32 steps. And then click that small icon again and you're back to seeing the whole 64 steps, the whole four bars. Let's put that back to one bar, 16 steps. Um, Vertical zoom, you do have. There's an auto zoom, which zooms the rows or um, lanes, whatever you want to call them, to always fill the height of the editor. Or you've got like normal zoom, you can zoom in all you want and then scroll to see any lanes or rows, whatever you want to call them, that are out of view, right? All right, that's those basics. Now, when you're inputting steps, you're in this default here, step on off. And this is to input step on offs on a step. In, 
out, in, out, shake it all about. Notice something, if I input a step, this becomes the selected step, haloed in white. Output, it's still the selected step. So I can use Alt and go over here and select that instead without taking that note out. So you put your steps ons, make steps active to trigger a note with this. Then you switch to the value list here to edit all these different values for any steps on any row that you want in the pattern. And the default value is velocity. So you switch to velocity and you can adjust the velocity for steps, whether or not they have a, an on command in them, like that. Alt left click to reset, or you can use these arrows to adjust that selected value up and down for the whole row. Any uh, steps that have a different value keep their relative levels to each other. And to reset the entire row, Alt left click on the pair of arrows and you've reset that value for the whole row. We'll come to this though. So this is to input steps to make them active and this is to edit whatever the chosen value is for all steps for all rows. Now if you don't want to hear it when you click to input a step or to adjust a value, yeah, just turn the MIDI out off now you don't hear anything when you adjust or input on commands or take notes out of on etc steps out of on. Okay, now um, at the top of the pattern here, these are the settings for the pattern. That's the step value of the pattern. This is the length in steps, but that's the value of each step. The default being sixteenths. Now, at the default, sixteen steps, each step worth a sixteenth, you've got one bar. If I change this so that every step is worth an eighth, my pattern now doubles in length. It's now a two bar long pattern and it halves in tempo and this will be familiar to anyone coming from the hardware days but the reason it does that is because now every step is an eighth in length and timing we still got 16 steps but now we've got 16 eighths which makes two bars and the gap between this kick and this snare and clap is now one two three four eighths not four sixteenths so it takes twice as long to go from that kick to that snare and clap. So the pattern doubles in length and halves in tempo. Okay, put it back to the default. This is the direction of travel for the pattern, forward, backwards, forward and backwards on random. Now, in forward or backwards, you can have just a one bar pattern or a two bar pattern, however long it is, but in terms of the container block, you only need one cycle of it, which can then be copied over. And if the direction of play is forward or backward, this will play forward. Or if it's backward, it will play backward because it's just one cycle to play forward or one cycle to play backward. All right? Yeah? Let's take that out. So this can play forward. The default. I'll pull that back in. Or it can play backwards. All right? But to play forward and backward, you can do that inside the editor here because it just cycles round and round. Uh, uh, well it should. All right, well, that's funny because it usually does that. Okay, but for forward and backward, you've got to have two cycles of the pattern. So I make this two bars long. Now there are two bar cycles, so it can play once through the right way around, and then it's got an extra copy to play back to front. All right, and as far as random is concerned, it'll trigger random st steps but only for rows that have an actual active step in them an on step in them so if i put this in random now it'll only generate random hits for the kicks snares and claps yeah not 
not for the hats but if I put in one hat you'll get an occasional random hat see the amount of randoms that are generated when the patterns in random depends on how many on steps you have for any particular drum so if I now put more hats in more ons for the hats now you'll get more random hats being generated If I put even more hats in, you'll get even more hats being ran randomly generated when you're in random, etc. Right? And incidentally, when you if you want to drag a row in for a drum, if you just hold down shift, like you know, you might do this. Oopsie daisy. Well, you just hold down shift, and then you, it doesn't matter where the mouse is. You're dragging that row. All right. All right. So that's that. Step value for the pattern, direction of travel for the pattern, and the length of the pattern in steps. And this is to nudge the whole pattern here. I'm nudging the whole pattern. If I nudge it once more this way to the right, these two steps will be kicked off this end and they'll be added on to the start. Boom. And the other way around, kick, kick. If I kick once more, this kick will be kicked off the front, it will come around to the back. Boom. Now bear something in mind, if we've got s steps, don't have to have an on to have a value. I could make these steps have a different velocity. They haven't got a note on command on them, but they, they have velocity or, or any other value. As soon as I go to step on and input an active step on those steps, those on commands are put in at the velocity of the step before it had a step on him. Okay. Take them out, the step on's again, and the velocity's still there. So bear something in mind, when you're kicking the pattern up and down, you're not just kicking the step ons, you're kicking all steps, that which might have other values in besides step on. Right. Okay. Let's reset all the velocity for that row. All right, um, so that's all the stuff for the pattern. And here is to add things to the pattern, the plus. To add a new row, you can add a new row for a, diff a new kit piece as long as it doesn't already have an assigned row. And for a pitched instrument, you can add a new note as long as it doesn't already have a row. And the, no the notes are organised into octaves or containers containing all octaves. So there's all my C's, there's all my E's. Those are my G's across all the octaves of the keyboard. Now I can create a new row for any note as long as it doesn't already have a row. The same as with drums. I, I can create a new row for any drum as long as it doesn't already have a row. Or I can create an automation lane, any type of automation, or I can put learn on, we'll come to that. And finally, when with a pitched instrument, when you go to add a row, you can add a melodic row, we'll come to that. With drums, you can add a row to add any new kit piece that doesn't already have a row. Add all adds in a row for every drum that doesn't have a row. And like with pitched, you can add in a, a, an automation row and you can activate learn to learn a row. So let's look at this learn row now. This is really epic actually. Add a learnt row, this is epic. Add a learnt row. Learn is active. <clears throat> Watch this. It's going to, when I do learn row, it's going to be the row will be created underneath the selected row. So I'll select that bottom row. I will now hit a key on my keyboard. Learn is on. Here we go. Bomb C7. It's made a row for it. Go down an octave. C6. Go down an octave. C5. You just tap a key, and as long as that key doesn't have a row already. Or it's not a key that's assigned to some command to make something else happen in logic. It will make a row for that note. It's absolutely brilliant. But I can learn it's still on. I can move my, my mod wheel. Oh, it's made a row for mod modulation. Move my pitch wheel. Up, oh, it's made a row for pitch bend. Move a hardware controller. It's made a, a row for it. Move another hardware controller. Another, and it makes a row when I move that hardware controller. It makes a row for whatever value it's assigned to. Yeah, that's just brilliant. So let me select that. Oop. 
So like that, backspace, backspace, backspace to delete, 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 delete. I'm back where I was. Right, that's learn. Um, now the lane itself, click the icon, you hear the pitch. Same with the pitched instrument. Right. Uh, if you want to change the icon, right click on it and you can change the icon. You got mute, you got solo, you got the step value for the row, which can be different to the whole pattern. You got the direction for the row, which can be different for the whole pattern. And this is to nudge just the row. You're nudging just the row. That's to nudge the whole pattern. Right? Then you've got this pair of arrows that only comes into force when you bring in a value like gate or velocity. This then adjusts all of the selected value for all steps of the row together. And if there are some that are different, it remember you know it adjusts them up and down, keeping their relative values. Oh, they've clicked to reset the entire row for that value, right? To default. And then on the actual title here for the row, if you click that, you can change the assignment of the row. This is to add a new row, either a new kit piece or in a pitched instrument editor, a pattern, um, a new note, a row for a new note, or to add an automation lane. But here you can change the assignment of the lane. Now for drums, you can change it to any other kit piece that doesn't have an assigned row, or change it to be an automation lane. Also at the top, you can do the add all to add a lane for every drum that doesn't have a row. With pitched, you can change the note. And again, they're organized into these stacks, all my Cs, all my Ds, all my F sharps. You can, add, you can change this row to a different pitch as long as it doesn't already have a row for that pitch. Or you can change this lane to be an automation lane. And again, we get this, change it to a melodic row, which we'll come to later on, right? That's what's on the row headers. And rows, um, you can be in step on to activate on and off for steps, then switch to a value and you, you're editing the value on all rows for all, 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 all steps for all rows. But every row has a, you can open it up and it has sub lanes. Now if you keep this in step on, once you've opened up sub lanes like that, this is always the lane for putting in a step on, off. But below it, you've got a lane for all your velocity. A lane for your start offsets, which we'll come to. A lane for your note repeats. And for your chance, and this is a loop lane. You've got sub lanes. Okay, but as long as you keep this in step on, off, the top row with the track header is, or row header, is always the step on, off. So you put in a step, Adjust velocity, adjust the start offset, adjust the whatever you want underneath. Right? And these sub rows have the same arrow pairs to drag up and down the value on that row, on that sub row, that sub lane. Alt left click to reset. Yeah? Alt left click to reset. Alt left click to reset. Yeah? Alt left click to reset. Now bear in mind you can each of these not all of them not loop but well, I don't know if I make the loop shorter no I can't nudge a lot of these lanes you can nudge and you can nudge you know because you're nudging you can nudge the of the velocity for steps independently of the note ons so I've put some velocities in here like that and I nudge all the velocities to the right the step on stay where they are the start offsets stay where they are, the note repeats, but I'm just nudging all the velocities across, 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 and back, 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 back. And you can do that with anything. Same with the start offset, make these with a different start offset. I can nudge all my start offsets across, step by step. Everything else stays where it is. So we don't repeat anything, like make that four. I can nudge, 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 and it's nudging that lane for note repeats across in either direction. Right. Same with chance. Right. Nudge, 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 etc. So you can nudge these value lanes independently of all the, of, of each other and independently of the step ons. Alright, now let me reset them all. Alt, reset, 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 reset for the entire 
you know, for each lane. Right, so you've got sublanes. You can take a sublane out with the X or add in an additional sublane. With pitched, you'll get slightly different sublanes, like a velocity gate and tie, but you can add other sublanes in. I could add a sublane in for um, chance or start offset, whatever I like. It's the same as for the drum one. You can nudge these value lanes independently of each other. Or if you, um, but if this is compacted and you nudge, you're nudging all values on the steps. But if this is open, let's say I've got a different velocity here and there's a note on there, I can nudge the note and it's nudging everything. When I nudge the step on, it nudges all the other values, right, with it. But you can nudge the values like velocity separately and leave the note on the step on behind, so to speak, right? All right, let's reset all that. All, all reset, all done, right? Okay, um, that's the basics of that. Um, <coughs> okay, then you've got the inspector. Now, the inspector continues with this, or introduces this theme that Apple have done with this step sequence. So, uh, listen, I think it's the best thing since sliced bread, but I'm being critical here. They're doubling up things everywhere, Apple. You've got the same commands all over the place in different menus. So we go to the inspector. These are all the details for the pattern. I can change the pattern length here, but I can do it here. I can change the step rate for the whole pattern there, but I can do it here. I can change the direction for the whole pattern, but I can do it there. So these are all doubled up. But you will come here to adjust swing, 16th or 8th swing, from 50 to 80 percent. Now what we don't get is the good old-fashioned you know 16th swing A B C D E. You'll have to work out what that is. The equivalent value by ear. Unless someone or you or I or anyone else works out what the exact percentage is to match 16 sw C, uh, swing A B C etc. Here's your pattern key. In the case of pitch instrument look you start with this default one octave C2 to C3, I could change it to D, F, whatever I want, in it. Yeah, right. And this is your scale quantize, which will uh, quantize, you know, if I put a scale in here. Um, right, it's a C major scale, C2 to C3. There's my, there's my scale. After you put in notes, you can scale quantize to say natural minor, and your rows change to natural minor um, intervals, or melodic minor, or harmonic minor. Yeah, or you know one of the Greek modes like a Lydian. Etc. You know, this this allows you to quantize the scale after you've put notes in. Right? But if I went to something like major pentatonic, which has got less steps, now it starts to double up some lanes. Look. It's double those two up and those two. Because there are eight notes. In a, in a major scale, but in a pentatonic scale, there's only six, so two of them have been doubled up. That is, I'm not. And then if you went back to major, what happens then? Does it get it right? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah, so be aware that if you change to a scale which has less steps, that you'll get some doubling up. Right? But you can apply these scale quantizers and change the key after you've put the notes in. All right, okay, so that's all that. Then these are the values for the selected row, and there's more of this doubling up. Here you can change the row assignment to a different note, as long as it doesn't already have a row, or to be an automation lane, but you can do it on the header. Here you can change the step rate for just this row, independently of the pattern, but you can do it on the header. You can change the direction of travel for just this row, independently of the direction of travel for the pattern, but you can do it on the row header. Uh, so these are kind of superfluous. You've got um, loop start and end here. We'll come to that. 
MIDI channel which you'll never use unless you're sequencing um, step sequencing on an external MIDI track some bit of hardware or maybe a multi timbral plugin and automation mode this is great out because it's not an automation lane but these are your row settings and then finally your step settings and I wonder are these even required you know there's a step well there's a step selected there's its values I can turn the step on off there I can adjust the note the velocity the gate the note repeat the chance start offset the step rate for that step put in skip tie but there are all things you can do here when you're in your value editing so I don't know, but this is a summary of the selected step, let's say. Right, so that's all that. Oh, and also at the top of this inspector, you see the title of the channel strip preset on the title of the track. If you happen to change this track, let's change it to say Sausages. That's the name of my track. I can no longer see what channel strip preset's on there, but this tells me. The channel strip preset, Yamaha Grand Piano, is on the track Sausages. Come on, Z20. Right, that's all that. Now the last thing we're going to look at in this bit before we take a break and move on, we'll, we'll move on to menus next because um, there's a lot of things here, um, is the library. Let's call it, I think it's the library, isn't it? They call it that. The pattern browser. Okay. You've got patterns and templates. Patterns, bass patterns, drum patterns, melodic patterns. These are all factory ones. Templates, factory templates. But you can create and save user patterns and user templates. And when you go to user and choose pattern or template, you can create new folders inside there to organize your templates and patterns into subfolders if required. You just you create a pattern, save pattern. You create a template, save template. I'll talk about this project here in a minute. But what is a template? Well, a template is, is any arrangement of rows, any drum lanes, or a combination of drum and controller lanes, any pitched lanes or a combination of pitched and controller lanes anything you want can be saved as a template and the templates in the library are they're all scales now these you you see you put one of these on before you begin, begin building a pattern because I've got a major scale here right there it is but if I switch to a different scale template it'll wipe all notes out even if I switch from this default one octave major scale and load the major template, which loads two octaves, it wipes my notes. Now I've got a two octave major template, C2 to C4, with C3 right in the middle. So you choose your template and then begin sequencing. And, and the beauty of these templates is, is that you, you can load up any type of scale you want. There's so many. So many, you've got all your Greek modes, you've got all your majors, all your minors, you've got one or two or three octave chromatics, and you've got a load of exotic scales, Eastern and, and Arabic scales, etc, etc. And you can't play the wrong note. So if I load up harmonic minor, you know... Those are all going to be in the harmonic minor. I can't put a wrong note in. clear pattern all right so that's the templates um, and this patterns as well and you can save your own now finally this use project key well generally it's best to have that deticked I mean you see although if you leave you know the project key in logic that project key which is by default C well, if this is ticked, you're going to get the same result as if it isn't ticked, I suppose, because if I load a template, chromatic, it's C to C. Harmonic minor, it's C to C. Minor, it's C to C. Maybe some of the others won't be like these Eastern ones. I don't know. I don't know what they are. That one, C to C. C to C. Okay, yeah, so you're going to get C anyway, right? But generally, it's better not to have that ticked. Right, just leave it unless you're working with the project key and you want templates that you load to be in the key of the project. And maybe it, I think it's so many load patterns, it'll load them up in the project key. Anyway, whatever. That, so that's all that. Right, that's the first bit. Just just showing you all the basic stuff. All right. 
Okay, next we're going to move on to the dreaded menus. And it is a dread experience, this, because this theme of doubling everything up continues with the menus, but it's worse. With the menus, we've got stuff here in the edit menu. But you've got the, most of the same stuff in the pop-up menu when you right or control click on the track on the lane header. Then you've got some stuff in the function menu, which is in this pop-up menu, and some stuff in the function menu that isn't. And it, it it's just... I just think Apple should have made that one thing was in one menu and then you'd know well that's in that menu that's in the edit menu that's in the function menu only and there wouldn't be this doubling up where some things are in both this and this menu and some things are in this and this menu but some things are not in this menu that are in this menu and blah 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 we'll, we'll, let's do that next let's then end there that's your basics and then we're going to look at these menus because you do need to know what they do. There's certain copying and pasting and, and other things, functions that you can do that are important, right? So uh, we'll move on next to the menus. See you for that one.